So the situation in Germany just went from bad to worse. We have seen a lot of firms pulling out. Chemical companies are moving to China. The world-famous Michelin tires is also closing down the German sites. Over 1,500 jobs will be affected. The company has reached the breaking point and they admitted the real problem. If Germany can't export competitively in the international context, the country loses one of their biggest strengths. It's simply not cost-effective to manufacture in a country anymore. And this is the biggest concern that everyone knows. It's the key reason why deindustrialization is happening and only going to get worse. The problem with Germany goes beyond just cheap Russian gas. That's a big reason to be sure. But it also revolves around their energy mix. Almost 70% of energy generation in Germany still comes from fossil fuels. And because they decommissioned their nuclear plants, there's simply no alternative left. Building LNG terminals will take some time. And with Russia cutting production, the pain is only going to ramp up for Olaf Scholz. So if you're a business looking to manufacture in Germany, this one chart alone will send you running for the hills, running away. In 2023, German companies were paying 22 cents per kilowatt hour, one of the highest in the eurozone, coming in just behind Italy. Just two years ago, in 2021, you will be paying only 9 cents. That's an increase of nearly 150%. It's a huge jump that makes manufacturing simply unfeasible there. Remember the global economic backdrop? Major economies like the UK and Japan they are in recession. Global demand is also faltering. So being cost-effective today is extremely important. The Red Sea is still in chaos as well. The Houthis are making energy shipments to Europe more expensive. OPEC Plus is also extending their production cuts. And this is a very big deal. Nearly 6 million barrels per day or around 6% of global demand is being kept away from the market. And this is keeping global energy prices high especially for Germany, which refuses to buy anything from Russia. And in the latest blow to Schultz, big oil companies, the giants of the world, they are giving up. They are starting to shut down their German plants, and this means more job losses are coming. BP to scale back German refining operations on high cost. A global oil major is realizing that operating in Germany just doesn't make sense. And it's not just BP. Shell is also reducing their operations as well from 2025. Germany's refining capacity is going to drop more than 10% from that year onwards. Shell is moving to shut down their German oil refinery in Wesseling and convert it to chemical production. Refining oil is simply getting tougher in Germany. Now, I know what you might be thinking, right? It's just random oil companies. What's the big concern here? And here's the problem. An oil major scaling back spells doom and gloom for many industries upstream and downstream as well. It feeds into a further lack of energy and supply in Germany. In other words, higher input costs or production costs for companies won't be going away and it could go well beyond just electricity. Out of the three biggest oil refineries in Germany, two are operated by BP and Shell. The Rhineland and Gelsen plant accounts for over half a million barrels per day of crude refining. Unfortunately, refining in these two plants will be cut down significantly by BP and Shell. They are calling it quits because they are probably losing money doing so. I worked in oil and gas before on the fiscal side and I can tell you in this business, margins can be razor thin especially when you are refining crude. Just a slight increase in energy costs can destroy a ton of profits. Crude oil refining accounts for 8% of global industrial energy consumption and it gets worse, 50% of operating costs comes directly from energy. So if you're BP or Shell, you'll run from Germany like you've just seen a ghost. Your profit and loss sheet will be a horror story. It's a nightmare to refine in Germany. From 2025, BP will be reducing their annual crude refining from 12 million tons to just 8 million. That's a 33% drop. Shell will also reduce theirs by 140,000 barrels a day of capacity. This is a collapse of over 40% in that refinery alone. And when that happens, a deadly snowball effect might arise. There will be less imports coming to Germany and fewer oil products like gasoline or diesel coming to the German market. NAFTA, an important feedstock for chemical production, will also be reduced. This is a disaster. Companies that rely on these inputs will have to import them from outside Germany. And that increases the cost of manufacturing once again. So it's a circular doom loop that will likely get worse before it gets better. If it even gets better, there's no guarantee here. The longer Germany loses their edge, the harder it is to exit this mess. Other countries like the US and China will be pulling ahead in the manufacturing game. The advantage gap will just grow even wider and wider. And it's not just Germany that's suffering, the whole of Europe is as well. 
and this chart shows us the importance of cheap energy, especially when it comes to refining. Refining activity in Europe is contracting. It has dropped from 12.2 million barrels a day in 2019 to just 11.3 million this year, and we can expect this to fall in 2025 as well. The input costs are just too high. However, look at whose refining capacity is increasing year after year. China and the Middle East, they are the clear winners. Beijing is getting cheap energy from Russia. That's a reason for this big jump in refining over the past two years, from 13.7 billion barrels to 15.3. Capacity in the Middle East is also heating up because they are the source of abundant energy after all. They are the biggest producers of crude in the world. And this is hard evidence that cheap oil and gas are the main drivers of industry. And without this, German industries are no longer competitive. It's not rocket science, it's simple economics. Even a monkey can figure this out. Take China for example. Because Beijing has cheap energy from Russia, their recovery will be faster than Germany. In January and February, China's exports rose by 7.1% and imports grew by 3.5%. There's a reason for this rise. Despite the sanctions and the decoupling narrative, exports are rising because the cost of manufacturing there is cheaper. No magic is required, no voodoo is needed, just cheap energy, plain and simple. But let's shift gears to India here. The move away from the dollar is accelerating and this time it involves India. And by now we know that India is friendly to all countries. They trade freely with the US and they buy a ton of Russian oil at the same time. But even they know the need to de-dollarize is here. India asked state refiners to pay for some oil imports in rupees. The Reserve Bank of India is asking their refiners to pressure their Gulf suppliers to accept the local currency. Now the plan is to bypass the dollar and transact at least 10% of business in rupees. And this is a clear move to remove dependence on the US dollar and the Western financial system. This is significant news because India is not a small player in the oil markets. When it comes to oil demand, India is a giant. They are the world's third biggest importer and consumer. By 2030, they will be the biggest driver of oil demand. Their imports will double by 2045 to nearly 12 million barrels per day. So India's push to accept rupees for their energy payments can't be ignored. Now you might say that that won't happen. The Middle East is still in the clutches of the US, but that is not 100% true. The seeds of the dollarization in India have already been planted. Back in August, the Indian Oil Corporation bought a million barrels of crude using rupees and not the reserve currency. The other party was the UAE, a well-known US ally in the Middle East. And this was well before the Israel war and America losing influence in the region. The UAE is now a BRICS member, which makes it likelier to transact outside of the dollar even further. And the reasons to move away should be very obvious by now. You sanction-proof yourself away from the West. You cut down on transaction costs and you are less affected. If US interest rates suddenly fly up, there's a long list of benefits here. It might have been hard in the past, but it's going to get much easier going forward. Russia has announced the creation of a new blockchain-based payment system for the BRICS block. In other words, transactions can be done outside of the dollar using digital local currencies. And these are transactions that do not require any US intermediaries and can't be blocked. And if this is done through a private ledger, the transactions can be kept secret from the US or the G7. Janet Yellen won't be able to track who bought what or who sold what. This means behind the scenes, India or China could keep buying oil and gas from the Middle East using local currencies. And this is a big paradigm shift that we must understand. India's shift away from the dollar is the canary in a coal mine, and this move could snowball easily over time. The BRICS aren't just big producers, they are huge consumers of oil as well. Collectively, they account for 42% of global production and 35% of consumption. These are important facts. Their entire production can more than satisfy their domestic demand. And if every country gets sanctioned by the US and loses access to the dollar, they won't collapse. They can still transact using local currencies to a great degree. India's shift towards their local currency is a foreshadowing of things to come. The dollarization is one trend that's accelerating and it just won't stop. And in our final story today, we must start calling out BS when we see it. And the latest job release is the most shameless report I have ever seen in my life. If you thought the jobs report in January was a blowout, February's numbers were even more phenomenal. It looks like Bidenomics is working like a charm, right? Job growth in January came in red hot again at 275,000 jobs. Looking at the chart, 
it looks like the US economy has turned the corner. Biden is sending the American economy to the moon. But that's if you believe these crazy jobs numbers. We just need to dig a little below the surface to realize there is all hype with very little substance behind it. January's number of 353,000 jobs was revised down to 229,000. They overstated the amount by over 35%. This was the biggest downward revision in two years. December's report of 330,000 was also revised down to 290,000. So the past two months saw an overstating of job numbers to make the economy look red hot. Now, I don't know if you saw the State of the Union address. Half of the time, Biden was touting record job growth that 15 million jobs were added in five years. But you just can't trust the numbers anymore. It's all fluff and hype to paint a rosy picture. And it's working because no one bothers to look behind the curtain. Everyone, especially Wall Street, just relies on the initial report, which almost always shows a blowout number, a number that just defies expectations that Bidenomics is right and everyone else, including you and me, we are all wrong. But the household survey is telling us a completely different story. The payrolls report in green shows an economy that's going to the moon. It's month after month of record job growth. However, the household survey in red is signaling an economy that's stagnating. Job growth is marginal at best. Just look at a crazy gap of 9 million jobs. This looks like two completely different economies. Both are official US data, but the difference is night and day. There's a huge chasm between fantasy and reality. But even in this hyped up report, big cracks are starting to show. The unemployment rate have climbed up to 3.9%, which is a two-year high. Despite all the blowout numbers, the underlying rot in the economy is starting to surface. As a whole, more people are losing their jobs. How can this be if Bidenomics is working? Clearly, something is broken, causing unemployment to go up. Higher interest rates are crushing companies into the ground. And this should tell you something about the real economy. Having blowout jobs numbers doesn't hide the fact that more people are working fewer hours. And when you work fewer hours, you earn less money. It's really simple to understand. The weekly hours worked have fallen down to 34.3 in February. People are working fewer hours and we are moving closer and closer to the 2020 lockdown levels. This is not a sign of a strong economy. Even though the headline numbers are moving up, actual earnings are falling down. We must look beyond the jobs report. This is a Wizard of Oz moment where we must look behind the curtain. Big downward revisions, weak wages, and rising unemployment suggest that things are not quite as robust as the headline indicates. Moreover, leading indicators are clearly weakening and a slowdown looks to be on the way. This is a polite way of saying the report is BS and the recession looks to be coming. Even though the numbers are hyped up, we must believe that the market believes it wholesale. And that's why we are seeing stock prices rise and treasury yields fall down. The markets keep defying gravity, even though the fundamentals are getting weaker. Wall Street and investors, they all love a good story. Everyone is risk on today because the initial numbers are just so strong. And going forward, we can expect more blowout numbers. Election season is coming and Joe Biden needs to make everything look like a bed of roses. According to the polls, 56% of Americans disapprove of Joe Biden. Only 38% somehow believes he's doing a good job and the gap is starting to widen more and more. His re-election campaign is in trouble and even CNN thinks that Biden could very well lose to Trump and this is unprecedented. With the conflicts in Ukraine and Israel getting from bad to worse, the only trick left is to prop up the economy with good news. That's the only lever Biden has left to pull. So expect more good news from the reports going forward. Don't be surprised if the market keeps going higher and higher all the way till December. Narratives can be extremely strong and Biden is playing a very enticing swan song. But let me know what you think. Can Germany's economy ever recover on its own? And do you trust the amazing US jobs report? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.